Welcome to Board Game Archaeologist, where we play time-worn games from the past. I'm Hunter. And I'm Rob. And today, we're looking at Six Million Dollar Man. The Six Million Dollar Man, the game, was made by Parker Brothers, came out in 1975. The TV show came out in 1973 and went for five seasons, counting some TV movies. Lee Majors was the Bionic Man, Steve Austin. The game is made for up to four players and from seven to 14, but again, there is no age limit to these games. The goal of the game is to be the first bionic agent to reach the end of the l last assignment, proving that you are the six million dollar man. The game comes with very few pieces. It comes with a cool board game. It comes with four characters. It comes with power cards, which are literally power on one side, Steve Austin on the other, and the computerized spinner instead of dice. Each player starts with eight cards, and they move around the board by starting on the first assignment and then choosing whether to go by wheel, which is just spinning and going however many the wheel says, or using power cards equal to as many spaces as they want to move forward. There's four types of tiles that they're going to land on on their way to each end of the assignment. One of them is a neutral space in which they'll just move again next turn. There's a power space, which means you'll pick up a power card and then also move next turn. There's the green arrow tiles in which you have to wait until it's your turn again and then spin or move using power cards backwards in the assignment. And then there's these random tiles that have a myriad of different effects, some of them positive, but most of them being incredibly negative. Kind of like the Disarm Nuclear Warheads tile where you lose two cards, or there's the Bend Bars to Escape from Cell, lose one turn or two cards. Everything's got a little bit different theme to it. There's one or two good ones, but most of them are bad. Yeah, I think there's the only one that I can see right off the back of my hand is like the perfect launch right in the beginning of the first, where it just moves you ahead five spaces. Right. But that's a rare thing when it actually works in your favor. Right. And there's also a battle aspect to it. If you land on a place where another character, you have to spin your thing, uh, spin the computerized spinner, see who gets the highest um, points, and whoever gets the highest points get a, gets to take a power card from the opponent and move that number of um, points forward in your roll. Once you get to the last part of the assignment, you cannot be engaged with other agents in that kind of battle scenario. And then you start to go by the instruction on the board, which is a huge part of the game, is just going by the instruction on the board. But each assignment will have this demand of spin like a five or more to move to the next assignment. Some of them are four. And the game says that if you try three times and fail, they kind of give you it and they let you go to the next assignment. Yeah, by paying the power card. And the way that we've played it, although it doesn't specifically say so, is that we made the wheel determine whether you completed the final assignment, which is kind of one of the things that isn't terribly great about the game, is that the, the instructions are kind of vague and leave you a lot of room to kind of make up your own rules. Yeah, there was a couple things. Uh, when you're in the level four and you're going for the big win, we didn't feel you could just buy your way out of it if you're really the $6 million man. You should be able to roll your dice and, and be prove that you're the $6 million man. And that's kind of going into the pros and cons of the game. Um, what did you like about the game? I really like the art. Even though there's not like a whole lot going on on the board, it's all related to the Bionic Man. Right. It's a lot like, um, it's one of my pros too, is having played the Bionic Woman in Episode 3, go back and watch it if you haven't, um, the Bionic Woman board game had really nothing except one word that said, Bi or two, Bionic Woman. <laughs> but, but this has pictures of Steve Austin kicking butt doing the $6 million man kind of stuff. And it makes you feel like it because it feels like that kind of spy kind of intrigue. You're diving, your space, crashing through a wall. <laughs> but that is a big, big pro for me is that, that um, it simply is the $6 million man. And there's no doubt about it with the art on the box. Anything else you like about it? I do really like the um, the pace of it. Once you kind of get into how it is, it's like it's really straightforward to pick up, and, and I, I think that's a huge pro. For right, me. and then the other pro for me is you honestly, outside of knowing how many cards to deal, um, the game, all the instructions are right here on the box. The battle thing it tells you in here, which is like two sentences, but the instructions. Almost unnecessary, except for those two pieces of information. The rest of it, you can just pull out 
and play right on the right on the board and really have a good time. Yeah, and, it, and that extra wordiness in the instruction really holds things back. <laughs> it when does. like because we came across one specific issue where there was an agent fight on one of the green backward arrows where someone had landed previously. So they were they had to go back next round, but they won the agent battle, which meant that they would have to go backwards that many or forward. It was never really quite clear. Right, so, but they got to go backwards first. And that's kind of <laughs> why it was a negative for the, the whole instruction thing, just because, like, it did. It stopped the pace of the game, and it made us go, well, does it say anything about this? Like, did I miss something? And there's so much to go through, and most of it's unnecessary. Right, kind of like how we decided right away, even though it doesn't say it, but when you're at the very end of an adventure, you got to roll the five or the four to get out, well, you're going to be with another character all the time. So it's kind of pointless to just battle and battle and battle. So we just said, once you're in this green spot, you're not battling anymore. You're just trying to get out of it, starting your next adventure. Like Hunter said earlier, it's vague. And you just kind of got to fill the gaps, I think. And if everybody agrees with the rules, I think everybody's cool. Yeah, if everyone thinks that it's fair, then I think it's good. I'm personally someone who's kind of a bit of like a, I really like a well-defined game that doesn't leave a whole lot of questions, but like in this particular instance, I was kind of fine with it. It was, it wasn't too egregious. Right. And it's the intrigue of the $6 million man. You know, after you play it once, you kind of cement your rules and you're probably ready to go at that point and you're going to stick with your rules because that's kind of what you do. And like all games, I always feel that the instructions are guides and can always be altered if you find a more fun way to do it, as long as everybody agrees to the change of the rules. Well, if you can find it, pick it up, it's a worthwhile game. Yeah, I highly recommend it. I've been a fan of this game and The Six Million Dollar Man for most of my life. Well, thanks for watching. Yeah, thanks. And if you want to know more about us, you can check us out at toyarchaeology.com. You can look us up on our Facebook page and our group. And don't forget to subscribe to us on YouTube. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.